Yeah, baby, I'm back at the gym. Let's get started. So the first exercise that I'm going to be doing is the Z press. It's one of my favorite upper body lifts and I plan to get very strong at it. Um, this is a one to five rep max and as you can see, I just couldn't do three reps. So I tried it again, I tried to suck myself up, boom, and couldn't get it. So you win some, you lose some, but I was still happy that I could get two reps, especially since I have not been training this lift for around two months or any lifts in the gym for that matter. So we switched to the overhead face pulls, which is a great exercise for the rear delts. Uh, I had to do the overhead version just because I would plateau if I just kept doing the to the neck version. So I have been doing some band face pulls at home, so it was pretty refreshing. And the next exercise we have is the conventional deadlift. So I'm warming up with 225 and I think I just do three reps for this. And I apologize if the angles are weird, but it's just weird. I'll explain later, but or I'll probably explain later anyways. So this is 315 for three reps. I'd say that's pretty good. Two months of no lifting and the most I could do with my bands was like 200 pounds. So I still have a 315 deadlift for three reps. And actually that is not just a three rep uh, 315 deadlift. That is a, I did it for five sets because I, my camera kept screwing up. So I had to repeat that for five sets. It was brutal. It almost turned into a volume workout. So on to my, the first exercise that I've done for the rack pull, the first variation, it's the rack pull below the knee. And I have to say, I do like the rack pull above the knee a lot better. And this happened. Yep. I tore a callus and I knew I felt some pain in my hands, but I was just like, you know what? It doesn't matter. And it did matter <laughs> because when I, and I wanted to hit a PR today after I did my below the knee rack pulls, I wanted to hit an uh, PR on the uh, above the knee rack pulls. So I warmed up to, I think that's 405. And then I put 495 on there and I just want to get a five rep max and I wanted to beat my previous PR. And when you have a torn callus, the bar just lifts unevenly and it's very, very weird. So I hope it recovers before my volume day because it got pretty annoying with the bar just shaking more or lifting more on the right side than the left or the left side. It was just very weird. But yeah, so this is brand new PR guys, 515 rack pull above the knee, five rep max. And as you know, previously on this channel, I recorded 495 five rep max, and that was the most that I could do at the time. So I've been out of the gym for two months. I decided, you know what? I need to get into this exercise again. So I'm just going to try this for now. I'm not going to do this next, the next intensity workout, but I just want to test, uh, like what I could do. So yeah, that's around a, I think it's a 20 pound PR. So it's pretty sweet. Actually, I forgot how much weight is on there. I can't really see it because I'm recording from far away. All right. So we got one rep. We got two reps. And the key to the rack pull is you kind of got to lean back. You notice how I lean back on every rep? It's very challenging to just stand over it like you do a deadlift. So you got to lean back and it helps get the weight up a lot easier. And I couldn't do a super long static hold because once again, those deadlifts killed me having to do those five reps. So the reverse curl, I told you guys that I was gonna do the reverse curl, curl for the forearms as soon as I got into the gym because that exercise gives me the most burn and the most forearm activation that I've ever felt. So I love this exercise and there's so much potential for strength. Like you could max out this bar like crazy. So I'm gonna, try to get strong at this exercise and I will get strong at this exercise. So yeah, it looks kind of weird from certain angles. It almost looks like you're cheating a bit, but what you have to do on this exercise is curl your forearms down as you do every rep. And what that does is just allows you to get more forearm flexion. And that's what you're, that's the main purpose of this forearm training. If you're not flexing your forearms, it's pretty much pointless because then you're using mostly your biceps. So yeah, this is 65 pounds. And uh, oh yeah, okay, so this is a cool exercise. Credit to Alpha Source. He had a great idea. He said, Josh, 
what if you do an overhead press and you this can apply to a z press or a landmine press it could apply to any upper body lift and you just hold it at the top on your last rep and i thought that was brilliant because he was right my traps were aching like crazy now even though i did this weight this is the same weight that i did for my reverse curls i just didn't feel like unracking or uh unracking the weight to be honest so i just used the same weight lifted it up and held it for as long as possible and you'll notice your body starts shaking like crazy because you have to stabilize like crazy or else it will fall behind you so don't let it fall behind you it's better for it to fall in front of you than behind you because seriously you could get like brutally assassinated by your own barbell so so this is my first time ever doing reverse lunges and I mean that because it's the first time I've ever done it without weight in general so I just hopped on tried to do 135 and I was doing three sets of five for this and I have to say I like it a lot more than the regular lunge and I can see why everybody says that's better to control knee pain and it's a very comfortable lift now it does require balance because I messed this up a lot of times and I was just like you know what I want to do 135 I'm not gonna push it too much but it still felt very nice and where you feel it the most is, or at least where I felt it the most, it's going to be the quads, the glutes, and the hamstrings. That's where I felt it the most. I felt it in the traps a little bit too, but that's probably because I haven't squatted in a while. But yeah, as you can see, I'm just trying to figure out, ah, where, where am I supposed to land? Because at first I wasn't sure, am I supposed to let my knee touch the floor? Or am I supposed to leave it hovering a little bit? So I, I was just like, okay, you know what? I'll just touch the ground every time because when you look in naturally enhanced, Alex is touching the ground every single time. So I just decided that is what it's gonna work. And at first the pins, the safety pins that you see on the left and the right were set too low. So <laughs> I'm just used to setting the pins for squats and just call it a day for anything that resembles the squat. But if I were to fail the lift, it would just drop way far down and then it would clash against those pins. So yes, don't forget to set your pins a little bit higher. They're definitely gonna be way higher than your squat. And uh, it's just for safety purposes and you don't wanna be that guy that's just like clang, 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 like at your gym. So respect others and just remember that there are other people <laughs> in the gym other than you. And this is an accessory lower movement. So this is in that same category of good mornings, pull throughs, hyper extensions. And I definitely want to keep this in my repertoire. Oh, and I'm sorry if there are some bad angles, like for the face pulls, I'm sorry if the angles were bad, but I had to crop some people out of the footage. So I would have to sit the phone on the floor after I asked for people's permission. Now the Zerker hold is phenomenal. It's a phenomenal ab exercise because it works your upper back, it works your core like crazy. And because of the bands, it adds so much instability that I am definitely keeping this lift in my repertoire. Like it is, it is it's fantastic. I'm never gonna stop doing these. And I'd just like to give a quick shout out to two fitness channels subscribed to me that I've checked out their content and they post lots of great stuff. Like. They're doing naturally enhanced workouts and they actually know what they're talking about. So those two channels are Easy Aesthetics and Barris Goker. Now Easy Aesthetics, he has these cool outdoor workouts and he has very functional exercises, but he's still running on a concurrent program, Naturally Enhanced. And Barris posts a lot of PR content and he's not just posting this content just to post it. He's showing what is possible as a natural lifter and he's doing it with Naturally Enhanced because there aren't there are surprisingly not that many channels that post naturally enhanced workouts and workout videos and tips. So that pretty much wraps up this video guys. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe and I hope you all have a fantastic day.